Well, good game day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. And let's wake up the football guys here on this Sunday morning. We know the Cowboys aren't playing, but that doesn't mean that the festivities don't uh, continue here at Joe Blue Sports Report. I've got to take care of some business this morning, but I will be back here by 1 o'clock so we can be watching the left hand up, the Commanders, going against the Atlanta Falcons, and we're going to be rolling all day, all the way into the Sunday night game with the Eagles versus the Green Bay Packers. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Ended up being up till about 2.30 this morning, having to take care of some stuff. Um, so I'm a little bit right there. I need plenty of coffee this morning. So, and, and like I said, I've got to take care of something. So I'm going to be kind of short this morning on our morning video. But I have good news for all of you Cowboy fans. In fact, I have freaking incredible news going by the numbers you know they will go through the numbers and they will come up with stuff because here, here's what's funny can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want we often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint and i probably am guilty of this can take numbers and skew mm -hmm. them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative. We'll fit them we into the narrative to. that we want to give you. All right, now, I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to give you the flat-out numbers out there because this is the best news that you could have as a Dallas Cowboy fan heading towards the playoffs. I know it's still a little early to be talking about playoffs. Playoffs? Don't talk about Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Yeah, but see, this time last year, the team kind of devolved. The first eight games of the season, the Dallas Cowboys offense was clicking, <clears throat> excuse me, was clicking on all cylinders. They were running the ball really good. They were passing the ball really good. They ended up still being the number one offense in football. But it was different the second half. The second half, we couldn't run the ball. We had Tony uh, Pollard with the plantar fasciitis. We had Zeke Elliott with the PCL injury on the knee. And we ended up being more of the chuck and duck offense, really throwing the ball down the field a lot more. And when, by the time we got to the playoffs, when we could only run the ball 76 yards, I believe it was 76 yards, uh, 76 to 166 against San Francisco, we couldn't keep up with them. We were not able to run the football. And this is where you must be able to run the football as the weather starts to change and evolve. So here's the great news. So far through 11 games of the season, the Dallas Cowboys running the football have been one of the best running football teams in the NFL. Right now, and granted that you know some teams have had their buys, some haven't, and so forth. And, of course, the Cowboys played already their Week 11 number, so it's going to be slightly skewed because they may have a game on some people. So some of the teams will come up some more. But to give you an example, if we look at the chart right now, we know Buffalo's already paid, played their game, 11th game, right? Um, Baltimore hasn't. So you see what I'm saying? So the Ravens can add on to the 1,628 yards. But here we are with the Cowboys with 11 games with 1,531 yards. And right now, look where that sits. Right now, that sits with the Chicago Bears, which are killing it with Justin Fields, the Atlanta Falcons, New York Giants, Baltimore Ravens, and then the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are making hay on the ground. Now, here's the thing that's interesting here. A couple of things. One, they're averaging 4.6 yards a carry, which is only a tenth of a yard less than the New York Giants, which is good because you think of Barkley, and Barkley was having an incredible year this year. Barkley is being the guy that they, they had hoped he was going to be all year long. It's not as good as, say, the Buffalo Bills. They're getting 5.3. But when you look down to some of the teams, let, let's go down in here. You go down to... The Giants are right there at 4.7. We're 
you know, like 14th at 4.6. The Eagles are way down here at 4.3 yards. So they're still getting a lot of yardage. And granted, they may end up passing us today um, as far as yards in the field. But you're getting more yards per carry than what they are, which is huge. Now, the thing that's interesting here, when we look at the top teams that are um, running the football yardage-wise, right? Here's the thing that's really kind of crazy. You think of the Chicago Bears. They're not good at passing the football. You think of the Atlanta Falcons. They're not good at passing the football. You think of the New York Giants. Not good at passing the football. Baltimore Ravens at passing the football, passing yardage. Let me see. Let's let's pull this one over here. Passing yardage wise, Baltimore is getting 187 yards passing the football. They're only 27th. Where are the Cowboys? Well, we're 21st in passing the football. You know, yardage wise, 214. But here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting, and I love the team ranking. Over the last three games, so you can look at the trend. Okay, you can look at the trend. So the course of the last three games, check this out. Bam! Over the course of the last three games, the Dallas Cowboys are the fourth best passing team. So think about that for a second. You're the sixth best passing, t- uh, rushing team, yardage wise. And you're now moving up to being in the top five in passing the football. You're balanced and you're able to really run the football. Now, here's where it gets to be that all of a sudden, I, I, this is one of those ones that didn't make sense to me, that I was literally surprised at. But I want you to see the Cowboys. This is again, this goes to that team ranking, right? The Cowboys are averaging 139 yards per game running the football. It's great. Last year, we averaged 122. So we're averaging 18 yards more per game than we did last year. But this is where it's kind of cool. Now, the last three games. Dallas Cowboys, boom, right here, averaging 159 yards a game. That's fifth best running in football right now. But here's where it's really crazy. This one literally blew my mind and is the best statistic that you could have and that you could want if you are the Dallas Cowboys, okay? And that is the Dallas Cowboys are averaging 156.6 yards on the road, which is the third best running ability on the road this year. Why is that important? Well, as much as... I hate the Eagles and hope that they stumble. It's going to be difficult for them to not get the number one seed. It, it's just going to be. I'm not saying that they won't. I mean, that, 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 yeah, I'm not saying that they won't. But chances are we probably won't get that number one seed. And if we don't get that number one seed, if we don't win our division, the best we can be is fifth in the playoff seedings. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Yeah, we're talking about playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, which means we will have to go on the road. So, going on the road, a hostile environment, you want to be able to run the football. There's only two teams, only two teams that run the ball better on the road, and that's Baltimore and Chicago. That's it. That's the list. And so when you look at, say, Philadelphia Eagles, they're only getting, you know, 142 yards on the road. The Giants are right behind us at 153. 
Um, you go down, Washington's giving 126. Atlanta, only 133. San Francisco, 122. Detroit, 122. So you can see where this is one of those statistics that you love if you're the Dallas Cowboys, and this can bode well for our team heading into the playoffs. And so we're going to finish this up with a wake-up call. Snap on third down. Back to throw. Good pickup block. McGovern into the end zone. It is caught by Schultz. Touchdown over McLeod. And that is saving the drive. Saving the drive. Cowboys would go on to win that game 28-20. to Dallas is now 4-1 and since quarterback Dak Prescott returned in week 7, averaging mm. an NFL best 33.8 points per game in that time. So, look, the, the, the offense seems to be working very well, and yet there's all this conversation from inside the Cowboys building about trying to go out and get Odell Beckham Jr. and add him as sort of a final piece uh, to that offense. So, uh, Rob Ninkovich, do the Cowboys need that? No, I don't think the Cowboys need that. And, and listen, offensively, there's only so many possessions and there's only so many touches to go mm -hmm. around. I get it. OBJ is a guy that you see as a polarizing figure who made a heck of a catch about 10 years ago. I, I get he was great <laughs> last year in the Super Bowl, but he also hurt his knee. And it's the second time he hurt his knee. And, and that concerns me. Having two ACLs, because I know from experience having torn my ACL, that when you come back, you don't feel that great. And to stick your foot in the ground and to do everything that you have to do as a receiver, I don't think the Cowboys are going to get the benefits out of it from signing him. What the public and the outside fan base is going to want to expect from a player like OBJ if they do sign him. So I don't think it's a great fit. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, the Cowboys absolutely need to sign Odell Beckham Jr. And guys, I get it. The Cowboys offense since Dak has stepped in has looked unbelievable. Over the last four games, you're talking about 22 scoring drives to only 10 punts. So for context, if those numbers are even, your offense is outstanding. But we're not talking about playing against the Chicago Bears or the Minnesota Vikings or the New York Giants or the Green Bay Packers. We're talking about playing against the elite of the elite in the NFC. And if you look at the Cowboys receivers, they've only got two touchdowns outside of C.D. Lamb's receiving touchdowns this year. They need a guy to come in like Odell that can win against tight man coverage. We saw it ended up being a problem in their playoff game against the 49ers. Dak Prescott was 13 of 26 targeted receivers in that game with a 26 QBR. They need to go out and get another guy that has the potential to be a difference maker in one-on-one -on -one situations in the passing game. Odell fits the bill. I guess that's the question, though, right? Potential. Yeah, Nico, what do you got? No, I have a question for Canty. If you sign OBJ, how many touches should he have when he comes in? Like, if you sign him in December, how many touches, how many catches is he going to have through December? I don't know how many catches that he's going to have in December, Nico, but the whole point is making sure he's ready for January because the Cowboys have title aspirations. I don't care about the regular season. What we're trying to do is position ourselves to make a run at winning the division, but then also to make sure we have the very best chance at being able to make a run in the playoffs. It looks like they're going to have to go the wild card route as things are right now. And guys, the last decade, there have only been two quarterbacks that have been able to do that. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Dak Prescott are either one of those dudes, so you want to give your quarterback as much firepower as you can in order to help him accomplish the goal. And we'll see what happens. Odell, obviously, significant impact for the Rams last year, but did suffer that significant knee injury in the Super Bowl, so the Cowboys have to figure some things out about how healthy he is. We'll obviously stay on top of it. And our Mike Reese was the pool reporter last night who went to... All right, so there you go. Do the Dallas Cowboys need Odell Beckham Jr.? I don't know. <clears throat> um, seems like the passing offense is doing some good things. Seems like the running offense is doing some good things. Maybe Odell will just be icing on the cake for the Dallas Cowboys. Anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. Tune in for our game day stream. Uh, we'll be starting out at 1 o'clock. And you remember. Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the show.